Welcome, pals, to the Electric Football Hero League Subudio Indoor Soccer Preseason Super Show, or Ethelsis Puss. We're now less than 100 hours away from match one of week one of season one of the EFHL Indoor Soccer Spectacular. Uh, 40 players on eight different squads will face each other in 40 matches and three postseason matches throughout the next several weeks. It's a 10-week structure. Uh, aside in the real world here, it's going to take far longer than 10 weeks to play this out. The two divisional games will spell week 11, and uh, the championship game uh, will be week 12. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to have a look at the structure of the EFHL as far as the two divisions and the, the four teams within each division. Uh, we're going to have the briefest overview of the rules in a nutshell. Uh, we've already covered those in depth in a previous video, uh, video in this playlist. And we're going to meet the squads. We're going to have a look at all eight teams and uh, each of the five players on each team. Okay? And let's just go ahead and have a preview of the 40 players here up close. I'll point them out to you. We have in the uh, Norman division, we have the Guilford Griffins, the Huddersfield Hydras, the Liverpool Leviathans, and the Watford Werewolves. In the Saxon League, we have the Cardiff Krakens, the Fulham Firebirds, the Manchester Manticores, and the Southampton Centaurs. And we'll have a look at each of these players in due course. So now, let's talk a little about uh, Subutio Indoor Soccer in the context of the EFHL. We've already, as I stated before, gone in-depth on the rules. Uh, very similar to 11-a-side soccer, except we only have... Uh, Five players on each team. It's five aside. It's indoor. It's arena. We have a wall surrounding uh, the entire pitch, which measures uh, 60 centimeters by 40 centimeters. That is to scale with a typical uh, example of a five aside uh, indoor pitch. There are no throw ins or corner kicks in EFHL indoor soccer uh, because there are no touch lines um, other than the the space between the, each of the goals. Um, the only time uh, the ball is considered out of play is if it should happen to uh, bounce over or be kicked over uh, the wall, which rarely happens because I don't do a lot of chip shots for reasons. Uh, primarily, there's a, a mirror, uh, a wall mirror uh, on stage left over here covered up with a uh, one of my uh, felt football fields. I'm not going to risk breaking that mirror with a chip shot and if I send a chip shot this way, it could get lost in paint or uh, uh, colored pencils or crayons or any of my other art supplies over there. So we don't do chip shots here, and it's technically not against the rules, but um, I just like to keep the ball in play. Um, another characteristic of EFHL Subidio Indoor Soccer is that the goalkeepers must stay with inside the goal areas, and the outfielders must stay out of the goal areas. That's the uh, hemispherical semicircle there on both sides in front of the goal. Uh, failure to comply with that rule results in any number of penalties. And there are plenty of fouling opportunities in Subutio indoor soccer. Uh, however, there are no uh, yellow cards or red cards. Sliding tackles are not permitted, and that sh uh, simply translate into uh, a figure hitting an opponent prior to hitting the ball. Um, that results in uh, a loss of possession if you uh, have it. Or at any rate, a free kick is awarded to the, uh, the other team. Um, a direct free kick. Goals may be scored from anywhere outside the goal areas themselves. Uh, what that means is that a goalkeeper can't uh, kick the ball all the way down the pitch, and if it goes in the net, that's or in the goal, that's 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 a non-goal, and it, because it was kicked from inside the goal area. Okay. Otherwise, anywhere on the pitch is fair game, even on the other side of the halfway line. That's what differs uh, the EFHL 
indoor soccer league from other five-a-side indoor soccer leagues. Matches consist of two six-minute halves, equaling 12 minutes in total. Uh, extra time is played as, um, as dictated by the referee. Um, and extra time is solely at the referee's discretion, aside my discretion. Taking into account certain factors like uh, setting up for a kickoff after a goal is scored, or positioning figures um, after a foul is committed, or injuries, a.k.a. if a figure falls out of its base, the time it takes to put it back in the base, or any other number uh, of, of things, for example, uh, uh, stopping to, to consult the rules. That, that's all padded into any extra time uh, allowed, but um, uh, full time expires after 12 official minutes in these matches. Now, in this first season of Subudio Indoor Soccer Play, um, there are no tiebreakers. Uh, a score that ends in a draw is recorded as a draw. Exceptions, uh, the two uh, postseason uh, divisional matches and the championship match. There must be a clear and decisive victor, at which point EFHL um, extra time tiebreaker rules will go into effect. Um, Please note that will most likely change in uh, the second season if uh, the EFHL draws in enough uh, different squads to mirror the Premier League's uh, competition structure, at which point it will be entirely point-based and all draws are recorded as draws. And championships are decided solely upon the number of points earned rather than uh, playoffs and a championship match. And even for, before the first uh, official game of the season, there is already much interest in uh, further teams joining this league for its second season, including several Premier League English teams. Um, in fact, Liverpool Football Club, not to be confused with the Liverpool Leviathans, uh, have shown some interest in, in uh, a sponsorship and joining this league with uh, five of their uh, of their players. Uh, in that event, the Liverpool Leviathans uh, would um, most likely move to Leicester. And if, uh, if either of the uh, Premier League Manchester clubs, Manchester City or Manchester United, join the EFHL, then the Manchester Manticores will uh, more than likely uh, move to Middlesbrough. Okay? But there are currently eight... Uh, Premier League teams that are uh, cur that are interested in perhaps uh, becoming a part of the EFHL next season, and very quickly those teams are Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, let's see, Chelsea, Brighton, and West Ham United. A side who could also be uh, Aston Villa or uh, I think Burnley. Um, their, their kits are, are very similar. But should all eight of those clubs commit to the EFHL, that would double the size of the league, 16 uh, clubs. And at that point, uh, I think there'd be no trouble at all for uh, four additional uh, clubs to join at that point. Um, aside, um, I'm already uh, planning a couple more hand-painted teams like the ones you see on the, uh, on the pitch here. Or, who knows, maybe... Uh, uh, the FHL commissioner could entice four more Premier League teams uh, to join. So we'll just have to see. Uh, but that's far into the future, at least five months in the real world into the future, because that's probably about how long this is going to take to play out if I manage to re uh, upload uh, one match every three days. And that may not always pan out, depending on how busy I am. But um, it's certainly manageable. Um, about a half hour's time commitment to play a match, and that's that includes all the polishing of bases prior to the match and all the uh, tear down afterwards. Um, the match itself, you know, I could probably, you know, 12 minutes plus a two minute halftime, that's 14 minutes plus a little jibber jabber in the first minute or two, and a little jibber jabber at the end, and then back to the studio. And that, it's going to give us around 20 minutes per match total. And I think that's quite manageable for what we're doing here. Now, before we look at any of the paperwork I've drawn up, uh, very quickly, here is the official timepiece 
for those of you who may be interested. This is probably a 20-year-old device. I cannot believe the battery still works in it, but this is, you know, quite simply how we're keeping time. Like so, okay? Nothing, nothing fancy. I was using an application on my extra old uh, cell phone, but I found that to be more trouble than it was worth. The, the, the stopwatch is perfectly fine. Um, now, depending, depending on how far I'm zoomed out, you might once in a while see these video cassettes on the edges of the, uh, the, the screen here. This is simply uh, the same width as the uh, game board itself. It allows me to put these weighted go rods back further. So they don't pitch over and, and send the uh, keeper up into the net. Uh, I am using uh, customized go rods here with about 40 cents uh, of weight on them to give me a little more uh, uh, defensive power uh, using these as solo goalkeepers, which, you know, that's what we're having to do since there's only one individual controlling both teams. Uh, I'm still uh, sticking with the no diving saves rule because diving saves are quite effective uh, with these uh, Subidio uh, goalkeepers. And uh, exception uh, when uh, when uh, an outfielder is kicking the ball back into uh, his own team's goal area, we'll go ahead and allow a diving tackle to prevent an, an accidental own goal, which is still going to happen every now and again. Uh, but uh, that's the only point. Uh, another exception is going to be on penalty kicks, uh, at which point I am going to allow the goalkeeper to uh, execute diving saves, okay, to make goal, uh, penalty kicks more challenging. Now, uh, if you're playing with this rule set with two people, disregard that. Do whatever you have to do to prevent goals, okay, as long as you keep the, the goalkeeper on his stick within the goal area. Uh, everything's fine. And also, Per the rules of Subutio, the the uh, stick must remain flat on the pitch. It can't, you know, we can't none of this. But uh, we haven't even talked about that because that just doesn't happen because my goalkeepers are always stationary. Okay, before we uh, have a look at the squads and the players, let's just go ahead and open this notebook. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Um, uh, let me go ahead and take the rules out of here because they're going to fall out if I don't. Flip this around like this. Here we have the season uh, standings sheet. I just whipped this up very quickly. We have the Norman division and the Saxon division. And here's what we're tracking. Uh, total number of points, total number of wins, losses, and draws. Okay? Uh, the points are determined by wins, losses, and draws. A win counts for three points. A draw counts for one point. A loss, no points. That is exactly the same as the English Premier League. Um, um, I hope to be able to use the points to determine seeding, first, second, third, and fourth place within each division. If that doesn't work, we'll go off uh, wins, losses, and overall number of wins, okay? If that doesn't work, we'll go over, we'll use overall number of divisional wins, and, and we're also keeping track of divisional wins, losses, and draws, okay? If, if we still have a tie for some reason, we'll go off total number of goals scored by the squads. If there's still a tie, and that's, you know, I've got all these fail saves going here, folks. Uh, we'll uh, use the fewest number of goals allowed to break the tie. Uh, saves and penalties, that's just for my own edification and my own uh, interest. I want to see how many saves uh, the goalkeepers uh, manage per, per squad per the, the entire season, and also how many penalties uh, these players, ergo me, myself, are, are scoring because the fewer the penalties uh, the better but it's always going to happen okay so we have the norman division with the griffins the hydras the leviathans and the werewolves and we have the uh, the saxon division with the krakens the firebirds the manticores and the centaurs we're going to keep track of the top scorer uh, in both divisions and i'm going to do that with these little individual team cards nothing fancy here folks again this is more for me than anyone else and I'm going to keep track of some information on these as well. And uh, we'll also, uh, ha you know, we'll have uh, uh, the two divisional games for the Norman Division and the Saxon Division to determine who's going to the championship. We'll play the championship to crown the EFHL champion. And uh, at that point, I'll, uh, I'll uh, 
this will be the, the commissioner's decision on who the most valuable player for the entire season will be. Pretty simple, folks. Um, uh, the most challenging thing is going to be uh, breaking ties with it's because there's you know with only forty total games plus the two, plus the three playoff games. Um, there's there's a greater risk of ties than you would get in the Premier League, which is gosh, how many games is that? And it's like thirty eight games per team throughout the entire Premier League, and there's twenty teams in the in the Premier League. That's a lot of of soccer, folks. So uh, and you know maybe next year we'll get to that point. So um, all right, now I have taken the liberty of going ahead and uh, whipping up the schedule for the entire uh, season. We're only going to look at Week One right now. It'll be uh, uh, two interleague matches and two divisional matches. Interleague means that it's a it's a matchup between uh, someone in the northern uh, the uh, Norman division and the Saxon division. Uh, a divisional match means it's within one of the two divisions. Okay, if you're a fan of the NFL, that probably makes sense. So the first match is going to be the Southampton Centaurs, the newest addition to uh, the uh, EFHL versus the Guilford Griffins. Uh, game two will be the Manchester Manticores versus the Cardiff Krakens. Game three will be the Watford Werewolves versus the Liverpool Leviathans. And game four will be the, Hutterf uh, the Huddersfield Hydras versus the Fulham Firebirds. Now, there technically is no home field advantage. As far as I'm concerned, uh, everyone's gathering to central London uh, to play these matches in the official EFHL Subudio Indoor Soccer Arena. Okay? Very little information to record, uh, at least within the tables here. I'm going to, you know, the, the goals scored which will determine the victor or the whether it's a draw number number of saves and number of penalties and again that's for my benefit uh, i'll record all this while i'm watching back the matches and that will go on the uh the sheet here uh, and i made plenty of room for notes so i can keep track of the name of each scorer and any other information that i want to record in here uh, I can, controversial referee decisions but there will be plenty folks and, and things of that note so there you go and of course there's you know several we there's 10 weeks of this plus the uh, semifinals and championship match which I, I've, I've went ahead and made four uh, spaces for that in case there is some sort of tiebreaker we have to do in a divisional match or in a divisional league I think you know what I'm saying if we get to week 10 and there's still a tie uh, for second and third seeding or something like that. Uh, if there's a tie for first and second seeding, we'll just go for those two teams and put them in the, in the championship. But if there's a, if there should, this is not likely, but if there would be a, a tie we can't break between seed two and seed three, we would have to uh, play a tiebreaker in order to uh, establish who's going on to the uh, divisional uh, match, okay? Well, there's not much more that needs to be said about the paperwork. Again, I, it was not a problem at all. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and it, it whipped it together pretty quickly. All right, folks. Uh, let's pause for uh, station identification while uh, your announcer uh, hydrates himself. And we'll move on and have a look at each of these uh, eight squads. Now, again, all this information is recorded on these little index cards, which uh, I'm gonna put, you know, right here on both sides during gameplay, so I can re reference them and refer to them. Can you see those? Yeah, you can see those. Not a lot of information on them right now, except uh, the the players' uh, jersey numbers and their names and the country from which they uh, hail. And so, uh, I guess what I want to do really is uh, let's see if zooming in will will uh, avail us here, and I'm going to lock it so that it doesn't keep zooming in and out. And this way, uh, I don't have to uh, give you a close-up of each figure, unless that's something the viewers would like to see. I just go back and watch each of the painting videos in which I, I showcase the paint jobs on these chappies. How does that sound? So let's begin in the Norman division with the Guilford Griffins in all yellow jerseys. The goalkeeper... The Italian Antonio Petrucci, and here he is right here. Let's just go down the, the list here. We have number 68, Goran Stanovich from Lithuania. Yes. 
see, we have number 17, Pablo Garcia from Mexico. We have number 27, Ahmad, or Ahmed Alkanchu from Egypt. It's a very cosmopolitan, folks. We got players from all around the globe here. At number nine, <laughs> forgot I named him this. It's uh, from England. We have Leroy Granville. And <laughs> that is for the two people watching this who either watch PBS on Saturday nights or have a subscription to BritBox or are from England. Uh, that's just for you. Okay, so there are your uh, uh, Guilford Griffins. Didn't do so well in the preseason. I'm not sure if they won a match. They might have a few draws, but I'm not entirely sure they uh, had many victories at all. Now we move on to the Huddersfield Hydras in all blue with red trim, which you might not be able to see on camera right now. Uh, by the way, all the cap to keep things simple, all the captains on these teams are the goalkeeper, okay? And so, uh, I don't know how to pick him up here. Uh, your goalie is number 12, uh, Stuart Edgerton from England. And uh, let's just go down the, uh, uh, the roster here. We have number 89, Cesar Colombo from Brazil. Okay. We have, uh, this is number 44, this is Klaus Gruner from Germany. We have number 83, uh, Lo Zhuo Zhuang from South Korea. And we have number 34, Terrell Wilson from the United States. Okay, that is your Huddersfield Hydras in the Norman division. Now we'll move on to the Liverpool Leviathans. Let me make sure the camera is still running. Yep. Okay. I don't want to drag this on too long. I don't want to go over 30 or 45 minutes here. Leviathans in light blue and pink. Okay. The goalkeeper is the, uh, uh, the, the from Zaire. His name is Mudabi Kor. Okay. We have number 33. This is Jean Dubois from France. We have number eight, or is that a two? Yeah, that's number two, uh, Roberto Necesito from Brazil. We have number 10, this is Solomon Tiempo from Paraguay. And uh, we have number 11 from England, we have Tim Pilkington. And if, if you're wondering if there's any relation, sure. Um, sure there is, okay. So that's the Liverpool Leviathans. And folks, uh, for the most part, these are not actual footballers. There, there will be one. Uh, but I really had fun uh, coming up with these names. Uh, now, let's move on to the Watford Werewolves. One of the very first clubs to sign up for the EFHL. They're wearing the gray and black kits, or strips. Let's see, the uh, captain and goalkeeper is number 86, uh, Jürgen Theowulf from Norway. Let's see. We have number five, Ernesto Del Playa from Spain. Uh, we have number 31, Fors Heike from Finland. We have number four, this is Will McShane from Scotland. And number 12, Noel Latham from England. Okay, and that is your Watford Werewolves Club. And one of the reasons I decided to give them names, folks, is because it, it, that does make the game more interesting. I did take the trouble to put uh, water slide decal jersey numbers on all these figures. So, All right. And that was the uh, Norman division. Now let's move on to the Saxon uh, division. And these, the way it's set up, folks, these teams will all face each other at least once during the regular season. Um, players within uh, the Saxon division will face... Uh, each team in the Saxon division twice, and the same is, holds true for the Norman division. Okay, uh, we have the Cardiff Krakens in red and white strips. Team captain and goalkeeper is Jacques Poupon from Belgium. Let's see, we have uh, number 16, Bryn uh, Lewich from Wales. Uh, let's see, over here we have Number 85, Sven Slinken from Sweden. And again, that joke is for one or two people who get it out there. Uh, number 80, 
We have Chris Kamara, and yes, folks, that is an actual footballer, my favorite footballer. And number eight, Han Farr from South Korea. They call him Han Solo because he likes to hog the ball. Uh, again, I'm trying to come up with some backstories for as many of these players as possible, and those will develop throughout the season. So you've got uh, some huge talent on the card of Krakens by way of Chris Kamara. Now we move on to the Fulham Firebirds, the very first EFHL squad to commit to this uh, uh, indoor soccer league, five-a-side league. Okay, the goalkeeper is uh, Tepe Shinigami from Japan. Okay, now the Firebirds wearing orange and white. Okay, we have number eight. This is Gennaro Giorgiano from Italy. Uh, that, again, that's that's for the two, two or three folks out there watching this who happen to read Sherlock Holmes. Uh, number five, uh, from Ethiopia, we have uh, Cora Mabon. Okay. Number three, from England, Luke Trillman. And number nine, uh, Vlad Stratislav from Romania. They call him Vlad the Impaler because he likes to kick the ball very, very hard. Okay. Now, that was the Fulham Firebirds. Up next, in white and purple strips, we have the Manchester Manticores. Again, they may move to Middlesbrough next season. Uh, you will also notice that uh, they have the purple down at their feet. That's to distinguish them from the Watford Werewolves, who, although, you know, completely different colors, on camera, difficult to distinguish. No longer with that purple beneath their feet down there. Uh, the goalkeeper for the Manticores... Uh, Jesper Helseth, number 12, from Denmark. Okay, we have number 16. Nope, this is the wrong club here. There's Helseth from Denmark. Uh, kind of do, doing this out of order here. Number 28, uh, this is Yosef Alfaid from Morocco. Here we have number 27, Alvin Ross from England. Number 22, Cristobal Fuentes from Ecuador. And we have number 80, Kevin Gillis from Canada. I think he's the only Canadian in the EFHL at this time. Okay, so that's the Manticores. And finally, we have the newest addition to the EFHL, the Southampton Centaurs. Uh, we have a, uh, a couple of identical twins in, in this league. The captain is number 12, Charlie O'Casey. Centaur is wearing dark green and light green strips. The, uh, uh, back here in the back, we have number 13, Bill O'Casey, Charlie's brother. And again, that, that joke is for maybe two or three people old enough to, uh, <laughs> to have seen my three sons. Okay, we have number 28, Enrique Salvador from Colombia. Uh, number 85, Paolo Giannopoulos from Greece. And... Number 88, Okoyo Jimbe from Kenya. So very cosmopolitan makeup of these teams. Um, certainly not all from England, but there's plenty of uh, uh, English players on the squad. So there you have it, folks. That's your roster of 40 footballers in our uh, EFHL Subidio Indoor Soccer League at this time. And again, next season, we hope to double plus uh, the number of uh, athletes. I, I want 20 teams so we can do away with the two div two division structure and just uh, emulate the Premier League. That's my ultimate goal. And uh, this this the shipment of of modern Sabidio figures I have on the way with uh, you know made out of the the flexible plastic uh, with the very very nice paint jobs. Those uh, seven uh, teams I rattle off plus the Tottenham Hotspur team I already have. This is going to double the size of the league if I decide to do that. I may decide to just go ahead and paint uh, 12 more clubs between in the next five months. Technically, I think I could pull it off, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that and play these uh, game these matches in a timely manner. So we'll just have to see. That's still up in the air. Um, I have no problem with mixing uh, actual Premier League football clubs with these uh, made-up fantasy teams. That's... The only difference will be the bases beneath their feet. These bases are all transparent super footy bases. They're technically heavyweights. And uh, I've, I've found that uh, there's no great advantage over 
uh, vintage Subedio lightweights or these modern Paul Lamond bases, which you know, may not be the best, but they slide quite nicely with furniture polish. Uh, I'm not using furniture polish on these bases. I'm using whatever uh, whatever is inside this tin. This was sent to me with the uh, 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 Flick for Kicks indoor soccer game board, so whatever that is, I just you know dab them in that and then wipe off the contents, and that, that does the treat. And I found that over time, you have to polish them less and less as you as you build some polish up on the bases and give them a nice sheen, buff them up. It works quite nicely. So, uh, well, folks, I think we're uh, wrapping things up here. This has been, uh, this went exactly the way I hoped it would. We've already uh, talked about the uh, referee here. His name is um, uh, Giuseppe Torino, uh, the, uh, the famous or infamous uh, uh, Napoli uh, striker. His nickname was Mons Vesuvio in his heyday. You'll learn to love Torino. You'll learn to hate Torino. His uh, his calls will be controversial at times. Aside, it's it's me. Um, and for those who have not been watching my uh, uh, Subidio gameplay videos, uh, yeah, this is this is solo. This is solitaire, folks. I'm playing myself. It's me versus me, and I've. Uh, I've discovered it's quite easy to put, to be nonpartisan when playing these matches. I just kind of shut my brain off. I'm worried, you know, I'm trying to score goals no matter, you know, which which players I'm flicking. That's my that's my uh, impetus here and it's working quite well. You know, making snap decisions is the key in that in that regard to be nonpartisan and uh non-biased. And I could tell Porky's and and say to viewers that my primary goal here is to entertain viewers, but my primary goal is to entertain myself. And as long as I'm entertained, it, it's all good. Uh, if viewers are entertained as well, that's all the better. Now, before we go, let's talk wear and tear. Um, I'm not too concerned about uh, the game board itself because these Flick for Kicks uh, indoor arena is extremely high quality, made for some very durable uh, parts, very durable materials. Uh, the big primary concern, of course, is the pitch itself. Uh, between matches, I'm... Uh, using one of these on it. Uh, it this is a, 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 a lint roller, basically, is what it is. And I'm not, I'm not using the handle when I do it. I'm, I'm rolling across like a rolling pin over bread dough. I find that works much better to get any dust or hair or uh, particles off, off the pitch. Uh, pitch maintenance is very important to me because this thing has to last me forever. Uh, as far as the players themselves, well... I'm using super footy figurines, which are extremely durable, made out of an extremely rugged plastic. Now, that's not to say they're not going to break over time. Uh, I hope they don't, but I'm not incredibly rough with these. I don't do a lot of those, you know, super hard chip shots uh, at the goal because it's not necessary. Not on such a small uh, a pitch. Um, my biggest concern is chipping the paint off these figures and or... Uh, losing the decals off them. There are water slide decals. Uh, they're supposed to stay on, and I have coated them with uh, watered down Mod Podge or Mod Podge, which is technically glue. Uh, however, this is such a kinetic uh, activity, such a kinetic game. You know, you're, you're conking these figures together quite a bit and bouncing them off the wall and stuff. And you know, sometimes they hit those metal goals on my uh, on my pitch here. So. Uh, you know, I cannot promise that the uh, the, the decals are going to stay on these, and if that happens, I may not be able to identify the figures as readily. Um, we're just going to have to play that by ear, so do keep that in mind. But otherwise, folks, I think we've covered everything. It's like I said, we're le we're less than 100 hours away. Uh, I'm, I'm shooting for August 6th, which is also the first day of the Premier League, uh, to go ahead and play game one between uh, Guilford. Griffins and the Southampton Centaurs, yellow versus green. That'll be our first matchup, and we'll go from there. Well, viewers, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you then. Back to the studio.